Hello, welcome back to Confabulation. I am David, my pronouns are he, him. Rose. And I am Rose, my pronouns are she and her. And thank you again for joining us with Confabulation. Um, we are from our sister's house, a domestic violence organization that provides advocacy, education for victims and survivors of domestic violence. If you or anyone or you know is experiencing domestic violence, you can call our hotline at 253-383-4275 or visit our website at OurSistersHouse.com. Um, and now moving on to our topic is um, women of the Black Panther Party. Um, so, you know, let's just, you know, dive right into that. Well, one thing um, that I did learn about doing this, uh, Women of the Black Panther Party, it, when we think of the Black Panther stereotype, it make it seem as if it was all about men and the domination, the dominancy of a man, but it's not. It was all women who started this movement and it wasn't a all black thing. It was a movement that the women came up with to help everybody else that was poor to help them with, they uh, hosted uh, blood drives, help do testing for sickle cell anemia. And you know, that's very prominent in the black community that we have that. And food for the kids that were in school that were, you know, having difficulties, didn't have lunch or anything like that. So that's what that was. And I'm beginning to think it was probably because women were doing all this. Men saw that, okay, they were dominating them. And so it kind of changed the scenario. And it was not even violent until the police got involved. And I think it was mainly because they didn't like what was going on and then it started the violence against them. And then it made it just a whole lot worse than what it was. That was something that I learned while doing this, which was really very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and the black Panther party was uh, founded in Oakland, California in 1966 and about 60%, um, 66% uh, or two thirds of the Black Panther Party were are were women. Um, mm -hmm. and over sixty of them were survival programs, primarily run by women. Angela Davis on the survival programs um, said these programs demonstrated that freedom is far more than a checklist of formal rights. Freedom involves free breakfast for children, free groceries, free education, free health care, free transportation to visit incarcerated loved ones mm -hmm. and then you know why why are these women overlooked especially when it comes to the black panther party um exactly i i think that you know you know back then they did a lot of you know how they painted the black uh panther party as just violent and stuff like that but they were also put in place to you know protect um, the black communities that you know were specifically targeted, and we know that um, to be a fact. Um, and, and then also, um, when they started the Black Panther Party, they you know made their actual their own um, newspapers, um, and it started mm -hmm. throughout the country. Um, and they used that you know women were the designers uh, and, and creators of um, the images that were in those newspapers. And then they also used that to, um, there were actually women, you know, with guns and arms to show that black women were powerful and strong. Yeah. And it's, um, that, that's quite a bit. That's a lot, you know? Um, and then it sits and I said, when I'm reading this about the black Panther movement. It makes you think, I don't know if you thought about it, but the Black Panther movie that is the new one that just came out. And when you're watching the first one, it's all about, you know, the man, he's the dominant of everything. But, you know, it wasn't like that. That's not the whole entire thing. So they've changed it as today's movie to make it predominantly the male figure, the one that has to carry on the, uh, the family name, 
and this and that to be strong and all that, you know, from the first one, I haven't seen the second one yet, but that's what it's all about. It's not about the woman, it's about the man. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that was really different to read this to compare the two. Um, yeah, and, and that is true. And um, and then also um, when it came to the aspects of the Black Panther Party, um, they allowed women to shine um, was the party was opening and welcome to anyone with any kinds of skills they had that could move the mission forward. Um, and that was really big, you know, they were, you know, pretty forward thinking, um, and, and, you know, giving women the opportunity to also be voices also to be, you know, strong and, um, painting women in a good light. Um, and, and they were, it was a great community thing, you know, and it, but now people look back at the Black Panther Party or when they call the Black Panther Party, you know, I've heard some things being said about them. Oh, they're buying blah, 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 because that, it's really important how, you know, media portrays things. Um, exactly. And, and that becomes some people's reality. And ultimately, <laughs> sad thing is, you know, if we look into the media, you know, they, oftentimes it is not the whole picture. Um, and, and that is very apparent when, you know, even speaking about the Black Panther Party. So we definitely want to, you know, help change that narrative. Um, mm -hmm. Because even now, um, I know I know that the uh, Black Panther Party, um, and, and this kind of goes into current events, but um, there's a group in Mason County, um, and, and it's a small community, small Black community, and it's thriving. Um mm -hmm. And, and then out of nowhere, I don't know all the full details yet, but basically in that community, um, there was a motor company that was trying to push, you know, basically take away their charter and, and mm -hmm. then so implant a, you know, implant a, what's it called? A, a big motor company factory. Okay. And, I mean, I guess that it, their side is saying it would be good because, you know, it would create more jobs and all that stuff and build up the population. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that community that's already there. You know, the, the, the community is thriving and specifically it's a black, um, predominantly mm -hmm. black community. And, and um, it, it ultimately looks like they're trying to shut them up basically because um, they try to take away their charter for no reason. Um, exactly. <clears throat> And then the Black Panther Party is one of the you know parties that has stepped in and tried to help them, um, and, and now you know helping them thrive even more. Um, so that is important to know that you know the Black Panther Party is still out there, and, and they are still doing good things in the community for Black people and for people you know that are not uh, people of color. You know the minority. Mm -hmm. So. Exactly. And it's like, because I'm also thinking about this in a nurturing kind of way, far as, you know, the women in the Black Panther movement, because us as women, we are natural nurturers. So it would, it's like perfect that they were the ones who started it. They're the ones who, you know, gave the testing for sickle cell and tried to provide education for the kids and make sure they had a good meal and everything else. So it's, I mean, it was perfect for it to start out as women because they are the nurturers naturally. That's just what they are. But like you said, I mean, if this if the community is thriving, why bother them? Leave them alone. I mean, if it's thriving, do stuff to make it even thrive that much more, but don't tear down something that's already working. Just improve on that, make it strive even that much more. But, you know that's reality. They just want to come in and do whatever, like, oh, this will work better. But it's not, it's nothing wrong with what's going on right now. Yeah. Like I say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So <laughs> not broke, leave it alone. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Madeline, a Rooker story, um, she said, I love mm -hmm. work at the central distribution for the party paper. The thought of being able to educate communities worldwide about the struggle was empowering to me. This was one of the first experiences as a woman in the party. We had a shadow showdown about that. When I first started, 
the men would go to the warehouse at the end of the day to throw uh, throw their boxes, load the trucks, and do airport runs. Meanwhile, us women were trying to typing labels for subscriptions or rolling posters and packaging goods to go out. At some point, we would get <clears throat> that work done, and we knew there were more than we more than we could do. One day, a couple of us went to the box, the next door, went to the next door where the men were leading the truck. There was a moment when the men looked at us like, what are we doing here? To make a long story short, it looked, it worked out that if we were, are able to lift and throw 30 to 40 pound boxes, get in line. Segregated work changed after that. From then on, women and men were able, <clears throat> were on the same side of the warehouse working together. That opened a lot of conversation. Work shouldn't have to do with your gender. It has to do with your skill and what you can contribute. Mm -hmm. I think we are, I think we are beginning to have the conversations in many party offices across the country. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, so true. That's um, like the, the stereotype is, take construction. Women can't do construction because you're lifting cement and you're doing this and you're doing that. But I mean, there are women that are just as strong as men that do construction. There's a couple of women that I know that are in construction and I'm like, wow, how do you do that? But that's what she did. That's what her mom did before her. And that was just natural for her to do. And, you know, that's a predominantly male job is doing construction. You don't see very many women doing that. But, you know, that just plays into the scenario, like she said, if you're able to, you know, throw 30 to 40 pound box, why not get in line so we can work together in this? Not as, OK, well, you're a female, so you can't do that. It's all about my skills. Can I do it? Can I lift that much? OK, well, let's work together and we're not going to worry about, OK, male or female. As far as that goes. And um, what I would like to say is. <clears throat> Even though there's, you know, a lot of good things about, you know, what happened with the Black Panther Party um, and all those things. I think that that also was like the painting of, um, you know, we, you know, the strong black women, like, you know, all that stuff that's really good. But at the same time, you know, black women can be vulnerable. Um, and so I, I think that it's also important that, you know, what she was saying was. You know, it's a community effort. It's not just man. It's not just woman, um, but it's, you know, all together. Um, and, and that was what the main point of the Black Panther Party was to upbuild, to build up the black community, um, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, move us forward. Um, and, you know, obviously at that time, you know, they they use that as, you know, the guns part as that they're completely violent and, and, and they're not to be trusted. no. They were there to protect their communities um, because they were so, you know, yeah. attacked. Nobody else was doing it because exactly because nobody else was protecting the community. So they did it on their own, you know, found different avenues to help protect their community and law enforcement didn't like it. So then it was scenario, oh, they're violent and this and that. And they really weren't. It's the police were violent against them. So they had to protect themselves. And that's where you get out of violence at. And that's not what the whole entire movement was about. Yeah. It was just trying to, like you said, you know, protect their community, educate their community, because, of course, they didn't want to educate black people back then either. They didn't want the, us to get an education. So it's like, okay, take matters into our own hands. Let's educate our children. Let's make sure our children have something to eat. Let's make sure our children's health is good. You know, check them for a sick cell, any other medical things that they were doing, the, the events that they had to help the children and those in their community. And like I said, the police, they just didn't like that. So now all of a sudden, the Black Panther is violent. You know, which is not true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then 
there's a, a, another quote that I want to you know talk about. You know, another story of the Black Panther movement is Cassie's story reflecting the legacy of her mother. Um, and it says, I think one of my mother's most memorable moments in the Black Panther Party was being a teacher at the Oakland Community School where I attended and my father taught. I was speaking to my wife and she recommended that decades later, my mom would talk about how she enjoyed working with the children there more than being a corporate attorney. I would like to believe that another of her most memorable moments was seeing how confident and secure I was at young age at the school. I walked around like I owned the place with my head held high and my chest poked out. I mean, you couldn't tell me anything. I had my mother and my father at school. Oakland Community School was one of my favorite schools and made an impression on me. We knew who we were as a people and we knew our history at an early age. That's rude. I like that. Because she was that showed her confidence. No matter what, nobody could just break her spirit at all, as far as that goes, because she had both her parents by her side and they're both at the school. I like that quote. Yeah. Um uh, and I think that's also why, you know, um, you know, a lot of Black Panthers were at HBCUs. Um, and, and I think that, you know, HBCUs are very integral in, you know, the community. And I have gone to one Oakwood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that, you know, um, having those communities and having the Black Panther Party and having those HBCUs, it is part of American history, is part of America, is a part, mm -hmm. you know, of our history. And it's really important um, yeah. you know, to to pour back into your own community because that is what, you know, HBCUs are. They're, they're pouring yeah. into their own communities. And we need that for every demographic. Um, and, and we get that at, you know, white people get that at uh, predominantly white schools. You know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We need our own schools at, as well. Um, exactly. And, 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 you know, that's, you know, that's really important that she was able to, you know, feel that because I really connected with that because I was, you know, uh, I went to predominantly white schools. But when I finally went to an HBCU, I felt, you know, at home and I felt more into my community. And I was more a part of my community. Um, and, and it's just like really refreshing, you know, like if any culture goes back to their home, you know, wherever that is. Yeah. around people it feels more comforting you don't have to um code switch and all that stuff um exactly. just to be you know completely yourself um you know which you know helps out you know when you go back into other spaces where there are multiple you know cultures and all that stuff you know it's important you know that's a you know another aspect that you can bring into the uh, you know these workspaces and um mm -hmm. community partners um it's important to be proud of your heritage and who you are and all that stuff so um exactly that's why then you know the black panther party is still important today you know um and, and being able to provide and you know help those communities that are um the minority communities um, exactly you know just like the one in mason tennessee you know being able to step up you know a, as a bigger you know party as a bigger you know functioning group um, mm -hmm. protect their own from, you know, bigger businesses, um, you know, capitalism sure. is good, good in some ways, but sometimes, you know, that's a way of capitalism that it works against the black community because oftentimes exactly. we don't have as yep. much money in all that yep. stuff and those resources. But then, you know, when, a, you know, somebody comes in like the, you know, black Panther party and they help, you know, and the NAACP come in and help out, you know, that, that really, you know, you feel exactly. Like, you feel like you're being backed up by your own community with it, which is huge. And you're not being pushed out of your community, which is what the Marnot, what they are trying to do with these big businesses is actually push the back communities out. Because like you said, finances, they might not have those. And all these big businesses coming in with whatever it may be, you know, you have all the other communities coming in. OK, we bought this property. We're going to build this. I don't know. Let's say take it for a mall. 
okay, a fancy mall that has, you know, only Nordstrom's and Macy's, the most expensive, you know, stores there that, you know, some black people can't shop at. So it's like, okay, everybody else is coming in buying this and then they have one spot. Then they'll, you know, close out another, what they say, mom and pop's business. Okay, let's buy them out and build something else. And then eventually that community is gone. It's a totally different community because you've even just slowly pushed them out of the community that is already striving where they are, but you're not satisfied. Media is not satisfied with it. So they want to come in and, you know, dominate it. In other words, I just guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we can um, view several programs as a model for how we can create a vibrant interwoven community that supports the needs of black survivors. Um, also domestic mm -hmm. violence, you know, we are, you know, ourselves um, at our sister's house, you know, we, you know, support survivors of domestic violence, you know, that are women, um, that are women of color. Um, and, and that's really important, you know, to be able to connect with somebody, you know, that is just like you in your community, um, that either mm -hmm. they've gone through or they know about what your situation is, you know, and, and they know how to, you don't, you don't have to code switch with us. You don't, you know, you, you're able to get, you know, the things that you need and you're seen as an equal, you know, and oftentimes. So it's, you know, okay. we are, uh, you know, a very important part of the community as well. Exactly. And I feel like, like you said, you don't have to cold switch with them. You could sit and be on their level and sit and especially those that have had the experience to say, you know, you're not alone. I've been there, been what you've been through. You know, it's going to be OK. You know, they might need that encouraging word to say, oh, well, you know, they can actually relate. They're just not here, oh, it's a job, and I was trained to say this to you and to say that, you know, on a personal level, that makes them feel even that much more comfortable to open up to you, and then you can sit and get them the help that they need because they're already in distress. They're, you know, going through this, they're running from their abuser, and they feel lost, and that, you know, when you're running, you feel like, okay, there is no one out there to help me or these that are trying to help me. What if they slip and give my information leaks to my abuser and then I have to run again? This is my life. Who can I trust? That's the main thing because they want to find somebody that they can trust, that they can actually open up and talk to about. And if they don't open up, you can't get them all the help that they need to get. So like you said, code switching, you don't have to. You can be yourself. And just sit and talk to them, you know, and get on their level and give them that sense of understanding. Yeah. Um, and, and I know that oftentimes when we do confabulation, you know, something that we always consider um, because this is, you know, an integral and this is very, you know, important and um, important to our organization at OSH um, to consider how does this affect the com black community? You know, we talked a little bit about that. And then also, how does this relate to or, or this relate to um, domestic violence or affect survivors? Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it might be important. I know this might be a light bulb or some light bulb moment, but maybe we want to, you know, connect more with the Black Panther Party or if we want to connect with the NAACP because um, mm -hmm. I know they support, you know, groups like us and organizations like us. And, you know, that could be a partnership that we could, you know, look into or lean into. So, you know. That's true. It's always good to have those resources back there that you know that, oh, okay, well, I can look into this because you being a minority, we suffer a lot, you know, going through different things and to have the Black Panther Party back there behind us along with the NAACP and you don't hear too much about them it's like they're in the background unless somebody something happens then oh well this happened this big but you really don't hear too much about them and it's good to know that they are there to help you with resources that people might not even know because me personally i didn't even know there was still black panther organization still you know as of today yeah. so that's you know something you like i said you learn something new every day okay 
Um, and, and then I want to close with that. Thank you for listening. And this has been Confabulation. Please make sure to subscribe and leave us a review whenever you're tuning in. Again, we are from our sister's house. And if you have anyone or you know anyone that's experiencing domestic violence, call our hotline at 253-383-4275 or visit our website at OurSistersHouse.com. Thank you very much.